Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Today I want to talk about the wisdom of God, the manifold wisdom of God. That means the multifaceted, the many-sided, you know, wisdom of God that has many different forms, many different layers. See, a lot of people just have a very limited understanding of what God's wisdom really entails. So there's, there's such a deeper level to it. And we as believers have access to it. Like I've said in many teachings, all the mysteries of God have been hidden for you as a member of the body of Christ. Not from you, but for you. And we need God's wisdom in our lives. Like I said, that manifold, many-sided, multifaceted wisdom of God so that we can successfully, you know, destroy the works of the enemy because we have authority and we need God's wisdom. We need his revelation, his understanding you know, the knowledge, which is his word. In Ephesians chapter 3, 9 through 11 says, And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Notice in verse 10, it says, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God, meaning that many-sided, multifaceted wisdom of God, might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers. Means we, as the body of Christ, are to let the principalities and powers, means Satan and his demonic kingdom, we are to tell them how it shall be, not the other way around. No, they're not to tell us how it's going to be. No, we tell them how it's going to be. We make known God's manifold wisdom to the principalities and powers. See, that's what I'm saying. This is a part of authority. So we really need these de deeper understandings of God's wisdom. And see, don't just you know have a limited idea about it because when you limit God, you limit his word, you limit his wisdom, and guess what? Then that brings a foothold for the enemy to come in if you're not built up in the truth, built up in the knowledge of the word built up in his wisdom. So we need to understand this awesome manifold wisdom of God so that once we do have a revelation of it and that we have it deep, you know, rooted within us, then we can make it known to Satan and all his darkness. Think about it. And then in verse 16 through 21 of the same chapter, it goes on to say that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Notice that once we are making known this principle, these uh, manifold wisdom of God to the dark forces, then we have to understand that we need to make sure that Christ, his spirit, his presence is dwelling in our hearts. See, we have to be rooted and grounded in his love, rooted and grounded in the word, you know, because true love is telling people the word, not what they want to hear but what they need to hear, telling them the truth. And we have the truth. If you have, you know, a Bible, then you have the truth. But you need to make sure that you have it, you know, rooted and grounded in your heart. Think about it. So that we can know the width, width the length, the depth, the height. Think about it. All the many layers of what God's word entails. His divine wisdom. It says, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. See, a lot of people just read that scripture and they think, oh, wow, but they don't understand there's a deeper lever, level to it. It says exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. But notice it says according to the power that works in us. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. If you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you're born again, then you have that power. It's according to the power. So you have to make sure first that you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. And once you are, you need to make sure you're not limiting the Holy Spirit, that you're listening to the voice of the Spirit. You're allowing him to move through you, to operate through you the way he wants to. You have to make sure that you're listening as he pours out revelation knowledge. See, we're getting, you know, every day, uh, revelation upon revelation, building those layers of God's truth on the inside of you, building that wisdom so that you can successfully thwart the devil, 
at his every turn. Think about it. And so we have to get this if we want to walk in victory, if we want to successfully, you know, defeat Satan, successfully, you know, take back ground that he's stolen. And he's stolen a lot from many of us. And we have to make sure that we're not letting him steal anymore. No, we have the manifold wisdom of God. We have the full measure of what God has in his word. But we have to make sure we have ears to hear, eyes to see. We have to make sure that we are put into position so that we can walk in this deep understanding of God's wisdom. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 1, 17 through 20, so that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Well, again, we see that we have to make sure that we are put into position. And see, this is a prayer that we need to make sure that we are praying. I pray this a lot of times over people when they you know, call me for prayer and counsel over the telephone. Or if people come in person. That God would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. See, each one of us as believers, we need that spirit of wisdom and his divine revelation. Divine manifold wisdom, divine revelation, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened to the truth, that we'll take the blinders off and that we can see that God has so much more than what we've ever even imagined. Think about it. We have a hotline to heaven. That's a divine connection. And on that hotline to heaven, you'll never get a busy signal. Think about it. God's phone number, Jeremiah 33, 3. He says, call unto me and I will answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't even know of. Deep things. But we have to make sure that we are not just, you know, putting the phone down or sitting on the phone. No, we need to make sure we are, you know, calling upon him. And he said he would answer us. And it says that he would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. I mean, he'll flood our very eye gates, our ear gates with the light, the revelation of his word. Think about it. And then the exceeding greatness of his power knows it's towards those who believe. If you're not believing, there's a lot of unbelieving believers. If you don't believe anything... And guess what? You're not going to be able to, you know, be immersed in these deeper things of God. You're not going to be able to understand God's divine manifold wisdom. And that's not a place you want to be. No, we need this wisdom. Think about it. And also in the Bible, we're not going to go there. I have a whole teaching series on the gifts, the nine gifts of the Spirit. But one of the gifts of the Spirit is the word of wisdom. And that is a deeper level of wisdom. That's talking about a revelation of the future. So we need to understand that, too. Like I said, we need to dig into the word of God and not just, you know, sit back and just barely, you know, go through the milk of the word. Well, God has given us a whole Bible. We need to get into the meat of the word, into the deeper things of God. In Colossians 1, 9 through 11 says, For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him and being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God and strengthening the Almighty according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Then 12, it says that we are partakers of the inheritance in the light. So see, if you want to partake of all that God has for you, if you want to go deeper in your walk with him, then you need to make sure that you have ears to hear and that you're asking him to fill you with the knowledge of his will and divine wisdom and spiritual understanding. Open up those eyes so that you can see clearly what he's speaking to you. Think about it. Then in Colossians 2, 2 and 3 says that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Remember again, they're hidden, but they're not hidden from you. They're hidden for you as a born again member of the body of Christ. And we have to make sure that we are put into position so that we can unlock these mysteries that are for us as members of his body, like I said. In 1 Corinthians 1, 30 and 31, 
But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, that as is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So Jesus has become for us wisdom from the Father. And we, if we want to protect, because if think about this, we are the body of Christ. Jesus is the head. We are his body. So he wants us to be, you know, one with him. So we need to be one with his wisdom because he is wisdom. Think about it. And then the next chapter, chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians, uh, 4 through 10, then we're going to go to 12 and 14. Paul said, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, or this age, excuse me, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers had known, of the age had known, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, Tom down Isaiah, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So, and Isaiah was prophesied, but now we see the fulfillment here in the New Covenant, that these mysteries that were hidden from the you know, past generations have now been revealed to us through the Spirit. Think about it, God's manifold divine wisdom, his divine revelation. Then in 12 and uh, 14 says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things which have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural, natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And then 16 says that we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. So if we do, then guess what? We can partake of all of the divine wisdom that God has revealed through his word and that he will reveal through his spirit. But you have to have ears to hear. You have to be put into position. Think about it. In Proverbs 2, 6 through 9 says, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of the justice and preserves the way of his saints, then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. Every good path. It says that from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He gives wisdom. But you, like I said, you have to be put in position. And God, you know what, is not going to force you to receive his wisdom. No, he's a gentleman. But when you are put into that position to receive it, guess what? You will go into deeper levels in the kingdom. You will, like I said, you will walk in victory. You will walk in things that a lot of people are not walking in because they don't have ears to hear because they just barely want to be, you know, be one of those Christians who are just trudging by, barely getting along. Well, no, you don't, you don't have to be in that place. You can be in the place of, you know, God's manifold wisdom, his revelation. You can be walking in all of what he says that you can walk in. And that's, like I said, exceedingly abundantly above anything that we could ever imagine or think. But it's according to the Holy Spirit who works in us. And the Holy Spirit wants to do all these things for you and through you. But you have to receive it. You have to be appropriate it and put it into practice. Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. So we need wisdom and we need understanding. And God, through his Holy Spirit, if you are born again, he will, you know, give you that understanding. But you have to have ears. You have to be sensitive to his leadings. He's that inward witness. And he is the teacher. He will reveal things, but you have to be listening. And that's what I want you to get, you know, into the forefront of your thinking. And like I said, you know, ask the Lord to reveal his word, to reveal the layers of his truth. Ask him to fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that manifold wisdom, that multifaceted, multi-sided, many-sided wisdom of God that you are to make known to the principalities and the powers. Like I said, they're not to tell you how it's going to be. No, you tell them how it is, what God says in his word. Remember, it is written. So take this to, to heart and start putting in the forefront of your thinking and start walking daily in God's manifold wisdom.
Amen, and thank you for watching.